Hi everyone, this will be a commentary over the Karma speedrun that I just finished rerouting and running. So, I spent part of uh, this morning after I came up uh, with some thoughts of like the Karma run and how to improve it and such. Uh, basically, in the uh, old route that I had made last week, um, we would get Casty and Oswald, we would get Evasive Maneuver, we, we would go to Black Market, and we would grind a couple of extra encounters to get Boost Start in time for Karma. And then with the extra BP from Boost Start, we could do a 4 turn Karma fight, um, and it was pretty safe and good and all that. But uh, I was thinking about it and how to like reduce it and make it better. The main issue with the old route is that you had to grind for... Um, boost start so you had to take a whole bunch of extra encounters which was kind of uh slow so um it, this route uh basically tries to skip those um encounter uh, skip all those extra battles and then it, uh not get boost start anymore also uh, right now for the one we just start party show because he's merchant so we don't have to get the merchant shrine um so this will just be a normal chapter one uh we skip you know any sort of small money like the 500 chest right there we walk in this map to be safe and then encounters like this you know we would just uh break and uh, arrow fortune and so on and so on but anyways um in the old uh karma route we would get boost start and then we would burst in four turns uh, using crit scope and that worked nice and well and stuff but uh in order to get rid of boost start we just uh need to find a way to gain uh late again and th that actually isn't too bad because uh, uh karma is on a set uh pattern so his very first attack is kind of like this power up thing that doesn't do anything the next attack he will do a single attack the next turn he'll do a double then a triple and so on we don't want him to start doing like doubles and triples and so on, but the single attack, because we know that it's coming, as long as we get our HP and armor in a certain threshold, we can with, uh, we could withstand the attack and then uh, re recharge our latent from the damage that it deals. So that's the core idea behind this route. Um, we are targeting a certain level uh, when we get there. Um, basically, this, from what I've tested, this works from levels 11 to 15, and I also get extra armor. And depending on the uh, level that I reach when I reach Karma, I will unequip some of the armor. So I take extra damage and then that will recharge my latent uh, and then because we uh, get latent again uh, we don't need boost start anymore and because we don't need boost start we don't need a whole bunch of M stones for random encounters and because of that we don't need uh, Oswald or Casty to do like mugs or suits for quests and stuff um, we need a lot less money so that helps um, we will still get Agnia because of the three characters Agnia has access to the most money because of clock bank um, but otherwise, uh, the other two aren't necessary. And then, uh, most importantly, we skip uh, Black Market, which is nice because um, Black Market is notorious for its RNG. Um, you could spend a long time rolling for the uh, Soulstone Market. Um, so we ignore all that, and that, that's a nice time save and such. Um, I'll explain all of that in uh, more detail as we get there. But uh, so far, this is a pretty standard Chapter 1. Um, Generally, if you are able to break an enemy and flee, uh, it is more consistent. Um, you could also opt to flee if you're, like, say, behind on time and you just want to take more risks. That's also fine. Depends on runner preference. And if you do want to run this uh, game uh, or this category, it's pretty short and simple. Uh, runs will be around 20 minutes or so, so pretty easy. Um, compared to the previous route, uh, the previous route is probably a little bit uh, simpler because you know you just grind, get boost start, and then just KO the uh, enemy. This one you actually have to watch your encounters and watch your EXP, and then the money is also tighter at the end. Although it's still pretty generous, honestly. Um, I don't opt into some like pick uh, item pickups, and uh, you know I skip like say the uh, white powder quest and such. So, like first boss in this uh, run. Um, not too difficult or anything. It is scripted, but it, there is like a turn where it can be a little dangerous. So first we toss the Firestone to break the add, and then a Thunderstone to do extra damage. Uh, note that we use the Thunder Small instead of the Light Small, because um, also here uh, we would look at our turn order on the next turn. If we go very last or something, you would generally want to heal actually, uh, because it's unsafe, and then you would uh, do the four spears. But here I, I went uh, ahead on turn order and it was fine. Anyways, um, on that turn when I just tossed a Light Soul Stone Small, um, if it was a thunder small instead, there is a delay in the animation when the ads are like uh, disappearing, um, and because of that, I I tossed the thunder sooner, because of, uh, I don't know why, but only the thunder small stone stone is glitched like that, where uh, the animation for the enemy is slower as they leave the field. Um, but if you do want to just uh, do it, it's not a big deal. It's only like a second or two. 
here uh, I walk out of this map because uh, you can get an encounter if you run all the way. I could probably have walked, run a little bit more, but uh, I haven't measured this to like an exact science or anything. Right here is the only skill we learn all run, uh, hired help. I learned it in this map because there are birds that are like double birds and weak to sword. And then if you get that, you can break them. Also, the meep is also weak to sword. I'm not sure what else it's weak to, but uh, basically um, the birds especially, the double birds, is very punishing if you fail to flee uh, multiple times. So I like to just break it with hired help mercs. Also, I mentioned that we need a specific level range for karma. Um, because of that, if you do get a Kate or a Puff, don't defeat it. Um, the only... Well, uh, also, uh, these birds, um, you could just break with bow and flee. Uh, the only time you'd want to defeat it is like if you say you do get a culture, right? And you know for sure that you're going to be able to afford boost start. In that case, then you can go, go for it. Because then uh, you'll be able to just get boost start and then do the simpler old strat. Which do doesn't, uh, you know... You don't need a specific HP threshold for that. Stones are actually a little bit tight too, because we don't go to black uh, soulstone market. So we'll be picking up like a lot of soulstones along the way. Uh, we also pick up Agnia because we're not going back to Cropdale. So. <laughs> And we'll continue with breaking and fleeing. You do also want Particio's latent at the end of the game, but you usually will have it um, unless he gets knocked out, which hopefully doesn't happen, but it can happen because there are some dangerous encounters and such. Uh, the next uh, threshold we want to reach is Agnia level 3 um, as we get to clock, as we go to Clockbank, but there is um, an encounter outside Clockbank that we can level off of, which is nice. So the left guy here has a Fire Soul Stone. Technically optional, but uh, it it adds a safety uh, to this clock bank encounter. Alright, unerring earring. This is necessary for uh, critical sc uh, for the um, invention. You need two earrings. Uh, this is one of them. And then this uh, allows us to skip a new delta. Uh, you sell here because you don't have enough for the boat. And you also want to buy this uh, soul stone. Also, I turned to night accidentally because I wasn't thinking straight. I thought that I had kept it on night after the uh, NPC hire. And the NPC we picked up is a 25% extra bonus for um, selling and stuff, so we'll get extra money out of that. Uh, basically, this map you always get one encounter. I run on 60 FPS, but even if you're 120, you're always going to get one encounter, so... So this map here, you have a very high chance of skipping the encounter if you just walk it all, so I walk it all. Might even be guaranteed on 60 FPS, I'm not sure. But fine, whatever. Um, here we skipped on New Delta now, so we will just go to Clockbank area. And you basically want to flee or break encounters and get out get out of here. Fortunately, uh, Agnia goes first and she can break pretty quickly. And then flee. Um, running on boat uh, is... Uh, lighter on the step uh, counter from what I've heard. So, um, for example, you can travel more distance running on boat versus land. So here again, uh, we're just breaking, so we get consistently. Um, we also want Particio at full health. Agnia doesn't really matter, um, but Particio at full health can tank an attack. Agnia at full health cannot tank an extra attack, so it doesn't matter. But it's just an extra safety. Also, that was 6300 chest. It's kind of awkward the hitboxes, but uh, just try to get it neatly. And then, unfortunately, we got caught by surprise, and it's a dangerous one, so. So, in this map, there's uh, an encounter called the Sticky uh, Slug, or Icky Slug, or something. Um, it has like 1200 HP or something, and uh, the Ice M alone cannot defeat it. So, you would toss the Fire S, and then the Ice M. Uh, but every other encounter you just use the ice M, so it's fine. The closest other M stone is a fire M at the entrance of Delsta, but that gives you an extra encounter, so I don't think it's worth it. It's debatable. But right now I'm not opting to get it, so. Uh, you, you don't need to do any chapters for Karma, so. Also, I guess I never really talked about what Karma is. Um, Karma is the solo boss in the Decaying Temple. And uh, also, we uh, allure this guy for a quest. It's 80%, so pretty good odds. And you can reload the save if you somehow miss five times. 
come as a solo boss in the Decaying Temple. There was just some rant runners talking about it and how it can make a, a fun random category, so that's why I, I routed this. This is a Shadow M you can pick up. Technically slow, um, I feel like I should maybe route that out and get the other M stone in Conning. But, anyways, oh, the Catherine Quest gives a lot of money because it gives money plus the cape powder item, and then here you go to nighttime, and the kid here, he has some uh, gold items that uh, we can get at level 3 with an entreat, so pretty good. Here, uh, the NPC to the right has an item called the uh, bottle of white powder dust or something. Um, if you turn that into the quest NPC in the center of Candle Brown, you get 4k, but I rather that out because we do have excess money, so. Here we buy the soul stones we need for um, the bottle, and I skipped the fire because I uh, kept the fire from the uh, uh, Ores Rush. Here this is the ice soul stone that we need. And then this uh, NPC is a white powder quest NPC, but uh, we don't do the quest anymore. And then we uh, need to buy an earring for an invention, but uh, more importantly than that, the Traveler's Charm gives 30 extra HP, which is actually necessary if you're level 11 going into Karma, which can happen. Also, uh, I got a dual leaf drop, which threw me off, because usually I only go once to the left, but uh, I had a drop, so I had a concocted menu there, sub-menu, so that threw me off a little bit. But anyways, uh, the Traveler's Charm is kind of funny. It only gives 30 HP, but that is actually and 5 defense. That is actually relevant at level 11 against Karma. Otherwise, um, Karma could uh, one-shot you. You just don't have the HP necessary to survive. But the extra 30 is just enough that you usually survive with like 20 or something, so or 17 or something. Uh, these guys are also uh, don't hit su uh, summon. It's a s slow because the pop-up appears. Um, these guys will weak to sword because it's near Hikari's town, so uh, you just break with mercs and then flee. Um, you could yellow flee too, but it's very punishing if you don't get it. So any sort of like double encounter, I usually just opt to break, which is like that. Uh, I value consistency uh, a lot. Although if you're gonna grind this for say like a lot of runs, you might want to just consider fleeing, especially since you have some levels. Here, I, I didn't actually know what this guy was weak to, so I decided not to chance it. Which is not awful. Okay, so conning north northern conning. Um, you should probably just walk this whole map. I ran for a good chunk of it, and you'll see that I get punished later. But you can also save and quit too. That's something else that you could do. So you have a fire M and an ice L, and you chuck both. So I mentioned that you should just walk the whole map, because here, you see this? I get, I get punished with another encounter. It's not like that big a deal, but it does kind of suck, because I walk for so much of it, you know? Oh well. And because of that, I decided to walk all of this map. Because I didn't want to get a double on this map, because I don't have any more spare stones. Yeah, um, Ice L is kind of uh, extreme, but we don't have any more fire or wind M's to chuck, I think. Oh wait, no, we, we, do, we do have a wind M, but uh, it's fine. Doesn't matter, really. We just have so many spare stones, so. No, it's, it's Thunder, yeah. It's Thunder M that you need, actually. Thunder M or Fire M, so yeah, that's why. Anyways, we're getting the bottle. Also, uh, I did sell earlier when I was in the Kano Brine shop, so because I sold earlier, I have enough money. And we're just gonna go finish off the inventions, and then we'll be ready for Karma, pretty much. I think this guy might be weak to Dagger, but I didn't want to take the chance if I was wrong. Again, we walk this so we can skip the encounter. 
I probably should have uh, rotated night and day earlier though. Maybe in I would recommend in the Canelbrine maps when you're like running, just at one point uh, rotate day and night so you don't get something like this. So breaking with mercs is actually really slow because of the animation and stuff. But again, uh, I value consistency so. Oh, I didn't mention this, but um, against the chapter 1 boss, your arrow of fortune on the last turn can uh, miss against Jif. So I was trying to do a run earlier uh, to showcase this, and I uh, whiffed on him, and I just missed, so... Annoying, but uh, just a warning. Anyways, we hit step ahead, because we need that for karma. This will probably be the next thing you want to try and cut out if you want to optimize this route more, but I don't think you can. Or not, like, reasonably. Like, I think it would be slower to cut it out. Maybe. I'm not sure. Alright, so we uh, entreat these two as gear for Particio. Uh, if he's level 11, he needs all three pieces of gear. And we release the NPC as well, and we deposit Agnia, because it's a solo temple, so we can only enter without anyone. Also here, I decided to pick up the Fire M, because I chucked, uh, I purchased this Fire M, because I chucked, um, a spare earlier. But, uh, in hindsight, I should probably just route out the Shadow M and opt into this one, I think. It's faster. And then if you just walk all the Kingdom Bride maps, you're safe. Uh, we go to Knight here, because the Scorpions can be defeated with any L M stone. And uh, shadows at the bottom of our inventory. So, but if you get the uh, bird, you can um, toss the fire M. It's fine. And uh, finally, I'm gonna put on the gear that I uh, neglected. And uh, I accidentally put the protective over the traveler's charm, so um, you have to hit plus in order to go to the second accessory slot and put that on. Also, I, I do need to heal the 30 HP that the Traveler's Charm gives, but I'm going to level up, so it's fine. There's also a Fire M Stone in the center of this map if you need a spare Soul Stone. Just FYI, in case you're doing this run and you ran out on this map, uh, you can defeat the encounter and then walk more to pick up the next Soul Stone, the chest right there, and then chuck that on the next encounter. The only thing is, uh, not every enemy in this map uh, goes down to the uh, Fire M, but uh, it does go down to the Wind M. So, if you can preserve the Wind M for the second encounter. Uh, here, before we enter, um, because there's going to be an autosave, uh, we put on Step Ahead. Also, we need Step Ahead for the random enemies in here. And I'll explain that in a, in a bit. So here, the, the bottle of Sleeping Dust, 65% uh, chance of putting an enemy to sleep. And uh, that's necessary if they outspeed you. So here, you see that the enemy outspeeds me. So I'm going to put him to sleep with this bottle. Again, 65%. And then you get a free flee if they're asleep. So, um, If you outspeed them more reliably, you can shoot one bow and then boost into bow x3. And then that breaks them and then uh, you could flee after that. Uh, it's more reliable than the bottle. But if you don't outspeed, just use the bottle. It's fine. And it works. Here we uh, reset, uh, we reload the save so that uh, we re re reset the encounters. Um, but that also means that the very first encounter we get will always be that same enemy, and we know that we can break it with bow. So something else you can do with that enemy is because of our HP, we can actually uh, withstand two attacks against them. So here you'll, you'll see here that I can uh, actually withstand two atta uh, an attack against them. So. Uh, you, you just have to heal it off, and you have to make sure you have enough grapes to heal it off, because uh, th that is actually relevant. Um, you could have used all your grapes before then, so... Here I uh, save and quit again, uh, although this is kind of slow. You can opt out of this second save, and then just go straight into the boss if you want. Uh, it is closer and faster, and if you just walk all the way, then you can get it. Um, but basically, if, if Karma has a 25% chance to crit, so if he crits you, then you can't win. Okay, so something to note about this battle, um, uh, basically, uh, I'll put notes, but um, on the turn uh, that I, like, uh, on the third turn, you could either use sp uh, Spring Boots instead of Defend, and then you'll take more damage. That's in case you're higher level. Alternatively, you could remove uh, the three gear that you have on, the Protective Bracelet, the char Champ Spell, and the uh, Traveler's Charm. All three of them you can remove uh, in order to um, take more damage against this boss to build your latent. 
but uh, it only works uh, between levels 11 to 15. I tried testing it at level 16 with all of my gear removed, and I just don't take enough damage. So at best, uh, level 15, you can still get latent with this uh, strat. Main idea is uh, when he does his attack against you. Also, uh, this will be the end of the uh, commentary, so feel free to leave any questions or comments. Uh, I'm just showing the FPS because uh, the normal categories uh, need that. Also, all the gear and such if you did want to see, as well as my stats and things. So yeah, I uh, hope that was enjoyable, and thanks for watching. And take care, have a nice day. Bye.